I'm Tom Morrow, and it was another great week in the NFL playoffs. I'm Sean McClellan, and one of us actually got the NFC Championship game correct. I'm Matt Mano, and I was that one of us, and we all got the AFC Championship game right. And I'm Finnegan Corcoran Dillon, and why did I have the Seahawks going all the way to the conference final? Welcome to BAB's Primetime Fantasy Report for the NFL Playoffs. This week we saw four teams that have one last chance to make it to the Super Bowl. First game saw the Green Bay Packers, who all of us believe will make it to the Super Bowl. They defeated the LA Rams 32-18. Aaron Rodgers continues to have that MVP season, putting up 296 yards and two touchdown passes, and running in for one himself. With the help of Alan Lazard, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Jones, the Packers are looking pretty good to be a Super Bowl team. So, guys, um, speaking of the Packers, do you guys think the Packers have what it takes um, to win it all? If so, what's the key component to the Packers winning? I'm going to start this off. Um, I have I have a feeling the Packers are going to make it to the Super Bowl, but uh, if uh, I think they're going to be versus the Kansas City Chiefs, and I don't think they have what it takes. Um, just due to the fact that, you know, they got a great MVP-type quarterback of uh, – Aaron Rodgers, one of the best receivers in the game, Devontae Adams, and one of the best running backs, Aaron Jones. But the key that's the most important thing is, is the defense. And, um, you know, say they versus Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs have one of the best explosive offenses in the game where they're not, they're going to run right by that, you know, Green Bay defense. So uh, I don't think so. Uh, Matt, how about you? So I think the Green Bay Packers, they definitely have what it takes to be a Super Bowl team, without a doubt. Their offense is unstoppable, and their defense, while the run defense is, let's just say, suspect, the pass defense, they can defend the pass better than anybody, better, um, as good as anybody in the league. Now, whether or not I think they'll win the Super Bowl is another story. If I'm the Green Bay Packers, I would, let, would rather play the Kansas City Chiefs instead of the Buffalo Bills if they make it to the Super Bowl, just because I think the Chiefs match up a lot, or the Packers match up a lot better against the Chiefs than they do against Packers, I think, or then they do against the Bills. Excuse me. The Chiefs, their biggest, their biggest um, issue, if they have any, is their rushing, de- is their rushing attack. And while the Packers have not, they don't have a good run defense, so they kind of cancel each other out. And the Chiefs, they don't really stop the run that well. We saw it against the Browns and Nick Chubb. The Chiefs can't really stop the run. The Packers can run the ball. Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, if he, if he can come back from injury. And uh, and Jamal Williams, they all are they are all playing the game of their lives. I think they could they could pull that off against the Chiefs against the Bills. The Bills can stop the run. They can stop the pass. They're one of the best defenses in the league. I don't think they match up well against the Chiefs, well against the Packers. So what about you, Q? Well, going to the season, obviously nobody thought the Packers would be this dominant at all. The defense has had a bad reputation for a very long time. However, now the more and more I look at the defensive stats, they've actually impressed me a lot this year. Damon Harrison, they just signed. Damon Snacks Harrison, former New York Jet. He is a multi-time Pro Bowler, helps that defensive tackle spot with also Pro Bowler Kenny Clark, an All-Pro member, I believe. That Packers defense is pretty good, rushing and passing. The pass defense, you got Jair Alexander, Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage, and then the rush defense, Week 16, they held the rushing king, Derrick Henry, to under 100 yards. Derrick Henry. Uh, Do I think the Packers have what it takes? Honestly, not really. Patrick Mahomes is way too dominant. Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, I can go on and on. Offense is too powerful, too quick for that Packers defense. And who knows? The Packers might not even make it. Tom Brady against the Saints. Drew Brees looked really old. Tom Brady looked just right. He maneuvered that offense in every perfect way. I wouldn't be shocked if the Buccaneers pull off this one against Green Bay. Finn, what do you think about this one? Well, um, with this Packers team, I think they uh, they will go all the way. 
Um, my prediction for the playoffs was that the Packers win the Super Bowl. Um, up to yet, I think you've seen a dominant team in the playoffs as they were in the regular season. So, look, you've got an MVP quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. You have a wide receiver, Devontae Adams, um, the top five wide, wide receiver in the league. Um, uh, you also have Aaron Jones, who is very underrated, I feel like, in the league. Um, some uh, Mano said it earlier, A.J. Dillon, if he can come back, a huge player for, um, for, the, for the running back position there, too. Um, and, of course, Jamal Williams. Um, the defense is amazing, too. I also look at Jair Alexander as being a great defensive player for that team. Um, Sean, you said it. Kenny Clark, I agree. I was going to say that in my point, but Kenny Clark, a great player uh, for that rush defense there. So, not only that, Alan Lazard could be a fairly underrated player. He scored a touchdown last game. It was a good touchdown to score um, to get them, uh, uh, you know, a win. But I, I think I don't even know if the Chiefs will make it to the Super Bowl, right? So I think they're, they're going to verse the Bills, and I think it's going to be a hard time. Don't think the Chiefs will make it to the Super Bowl because I don't know what's happening with Patrick Mahomes with his concussion. Um, you know, uh, I don't know what's happening there yet. But if he if they verse the Bills, I think it's going to be a, a really hard time for them because I think the Bills are very dominant too. So. Um, can the Packers go all the way? Yeah. Yeah, I think they can. And I think they will win the Super Bowl. Well, Finn, before I talk about the Buccaneers and Saints game, I'd like to state something about what you said about Aaron Jones in that backfield. You said Aaron Jones is underrated in this case. I happen to believe he's overrated in a way. A.J. Dillon came in and won, I forgot what week it was, Outplayed Aaron Jones. Jones hit the bench. He yeah, Q. It was it was it was, it was the week. The Titans. It was a snow game against the Titans. You know, AJ Dillon came in and basically owned it. Came in had like a hundred rushing yards. You know, and that's the difference between Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon is more of a downhill runner. You know, he's he's not afraid to do, you know put two guys and put two guys on his shoulder and just run him over. You know, while Aaron Jones is. You know, that runner where he's making cuts back and forth. And that's the difference between them. And, um, you know, Green Bay definitely utilizes it in different positions and different ways in different scenarios on the field. Anyways, the Packers do, however, have to get by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who looked extremely strong in Sunday's game against the New Orleans Saints. With the help from Tom Brady and the Bucks, they are going to the NFC Conference Championship game for the first time since 2002. One thing is for sure, and it's that this will be a great game at Lambeau Field. Without a doubt, another great game will be the AFC Conference Championship game between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs, who punched their tickets this past weekend. On Saturday, the Buffalo Bills caught Lamar Jackson and the Ravens slipping when they defeated them on Saturday night. The Bills' defense played a huge part in this game, holding Lamar Jackson to only 162 passing yards and zero passing touchdowns. And one costly interception that led to a pick six. Josh Allen was able to find Stefan Diggs for one touchdown. So guys, how much of a chance do the Bills have against the Kansas City Chiefs? I think they have a respectable solid chance. It's all gonna depend on the health of Patrick Mahomes in this case, whether he plays or not. Patrick Mahomes doesn't play. Sorry, Kansas City fans. Buffalo, I think, takes it. Bills Mafia, you win. Patrick Mahomes plays. We got a good game on our hands. Strong pass defense from the Bills. Obviously proved that against Baltimore. And rush defense. Stopped Lamar in every way. I don't know. I think the Bills had a solid chance. Would I be shocked if they won against Kansas City? No, I wouldn't at all. Good defense. Good offense. Great connection. Allen to Diggs. I think it's solid. Man, what do you think about this? I think the mana curse is gonna strike. Because the next word is out of my mouth. It's probably gonna be my second absurd take of the day, but it will not be the most absurd take in the episode, believe me. So, I think the Bills win the game. I think the Bills win the game. Just because I don't, if Patrick Mahomes plays, then whatever I'm about to say, 
disregard it entirely. But if Patrick Mahomes is not 100%, if he's even 99.9% .9 ready for the game, if there's one sliver of a chance that he is injured, that he is that he is not good to go, fails in the game. Because that Chiefs offense rides so much on and there. That Chiefs offense rides so much on Patrick Mahomes. I think the way that the Chiefs are going to win this game is with the big plays. Not in the running game because the Bills have such intelligent corners, Trey White, Taron Johnson, that can that can read an offense so well so that those crazy end arounds and the jet sweeps, the Bills will be prepared for that. They will be ready for every shenanigans, gadget plays that the Chiefs throw at the Bills. What the way that the Bills win this game or the Chiefs win this game by airing it out better than the, than Josh Allen and the Bills can. Tyreek Hill, one Tyreek Hill, 60-plus yard touchdown, that's game. That's game. Bills aren't coming back from that. Because that, that'll open up the rest of the field for the entire rest of the Chiefs offense for Kelsey, for um, Edwards Hilaire, if he plays for, or, or whoever the running back is for the Chiefs. One deep shot to Tyreek Hill, and that ends the game. But if the, but if the Bills can't get that, but if the Bills can, are able to stop that, then I think they win the game. Well, Mano, um, I think if any team is going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, it's going to be the Buffalo Bills. Uh, these two teams met in, uh, I think, I'm not sure what week it was, but it was early October. It was a primetime night. Um, I think it was a Monday night game. Uh, Buffalo was just coming back from that, you know, where they versed the Titans, and the Titans had a big COVID-19 outbreak in the, in the early season. Um, you know, it, was a, it was a rainy game, and that's a game where Clyde edwards hilaire ripped for over 100 plus plus yards on the ground um i'm not too sure but i don't think edwards player is going to be out there this week you know he wasn't out there last week um you know, due to injury but uh buffalo bills are, are a real team you know they got an elite quarterback josh allen you know he's playing the best football he's playing uh they got a top receiver stefan Diggs. don't sleep on john brown cole beasley uh gabriel davis you know they're 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 pretty decent and uh they're they're running back Devin Singletary, Devin Singletary. Um, you know, the loss of Zach Moss hurts, but uh, Singletary is, you know, doing the best he can in their defense. Their defense is not to be slept on, just like those, you know, underrated receivers on the Bills. But if Patrick Holmes plays, which he's trending in the right direction, uh, you know, he, he practices, practice Wednesday, trended in the right direction, um, then, you know, Andy Reid and the Chiefs are going to get their best, you know, best quarterback back, and you're ready that ready for action. And this is going to be like, uh, like I said, you know, one of the games of the year right here. Ben, how about you? Well, I'm uh, a little interested because I, um, if Patrick Mahomes doesn't play and Chad Henney plays, I think that quarterback right there is only going to throw to Kelsey because I think it's the safest option. I don't think he's gonna throw a deep ball. I really don't. Because I think it's it's too risky. It, you, you can't expect a quarterback, a QB two, to just do something like that. But it's Andy Reid, right, who's coach. So I'm not surprised with anything. Andy Reid, on a fourth down, instead of running the ball on a fourth and inches, and inches, he throws the ball to quarterback two for the game to Tyreek Hill. I mean, wow, just unbelievable. So I would, I, I'm, I, I'm always surprised with Andy Reid's calls. They usually work. He's one of those coaches in the game right now who's amazing. But um, the Bills, I think, will just take this one. I, I think they have a total chance against the Chiefs. If Mahomes isn't playing, no, no, I'm sorry. I just don't think the Chiefs will win at all. I don't think they have a chance. I think maybe, yeah, their defense could come up big, possibly. You know, the Honey Badger, Tyron Mateo, maybe. But I don't know. I don't think so. And the Bills defense, I think, is uh, getting underrated in the playoffs. We, we saw them last week get a pick six for, oh, what was that, like a 102-yard pick six? So I'm not sleeping on the Bills. I'm not. That's a team That's a team who's going to go to the Super Bowl, and they're going to win the AFC Championship. So 
Uh, yeah, they have a, they have a chance. And Josh Allen, this year is it's his obviously best year he's ever had in the league, and he, he's uh, he's amazing. So now, Bills have a total chance uh, in this one. Bills had a great game, but now they have to face the defending Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. As per as per recording, it's not confirmed or denied that Patrick Mahomes is going to play on Sunday. He took a nasty looking concussion that left him stumbling to get up. Mahomes is trending in the right direction. He started practicing Wednesday, and Andy Reid and the Chiefs are excited to hopefully see him on the field Sunday. Chad Henning was able to quench the Chiefs' spot in the conference game, and as they say, anything's possible. There's a lot of pressure on Mahomes and the drought. Good end and the Chiefs. Either way, this game is going to be great. Now, this game very well could have been flipped the other way. The Chiefs game very well could have been flipped the other way. The Chiefs beat the Browns, but there was one play in particular where Rashard Higgins died for the pylon. Kevin Stefanski said, I, I love the effort, but you got to pull that ball back. Keep the ball. He got hit in the head, fumbled the ball out the back of the end zone and touchback. Now, I have a question for you guys. That play... Very clearly hit to the head. Very clearly should have been a fifth, should have been a penalty. Half the distance to the goal. All that fun stuff. Brown should have kept the ball. Probably would have scored on that try. Now the issue is the ref missed that, and they can't review. They can't just throw the flag on. That's an uh, that's not a reviewable play. Had there been targeting in the NFL, there would have. So my question to you is: Should there be targeting in the NFL? One hundred percent. There should be targeting in the NFL. I think. Vontez Burfick kind of started that trend and got people very alerted of this targeting rule. College targeting is very, very noticeable. There should be targeting in the NFL as well. I think if you are a part of targeting, in my eyes, even if you're a good person, you're a dirty player. You don't care about other, you're just trying to hit, you're just trying to destroy the other person. I do believe targeting just should be present in the NFL. I think it's silly that these refs don't care about this rule. I think that that's a really, like, um, that's a really harsh claim to take. Because look at James Stalski in the Ohio State. He's the Clemson middle linebacker against Ohio State. Do you think he was leading with his helmet on that play where he got ejected for targeting in the Clemson game? Or you in the Ohio State game? You, you can't ask me that because I'm an Ohio State kind of guy. I'm <sighs> Ohio State. You can't ask me that question. It, so wouldn't, you know it wouldn't have affected the outcome of the game. But let's... So, do you think that was targeting? See, I don't know in that case, because that was a case where it's like, it could go either way, because from one angle, you're like, oh my god, targeting, and from another angle, you're like, that's not close. Yeah, Fields was like, he was trying to get out of the way, and so was Stalski, he was trying to not hit him with the helmet. That was just really bad luck on both sides, because Fields now has a couple of broken ribs, and Stalski got ejected on, on what couldn't on what could have been the final game of his college career. So, well, target. I do think, tar, I do think targeting should be in the NFL. I do think that there should be a way to evaluate the, evaluate the intent of a player, like with like maybe with like a malicious intent. Like if it was very clearly intent, if there's very if there's a way to overrule the like targeting call by like, just here's my proposition. Targeting should be as it is in college with one with one change. If it is very clearly just a bad situation and it was totally unincident it was totally incidental. It was totally it looked like there was no intent. The player was not leading with the crowd in their helmet on purpose. And I know it's hard to discern intent in a, in sports, but if the refs can do that and it's gonna we're, we're Ruling this based on guilty until proven innocent. So, if, so um, if there is very clear evidence that you were not trying to do that, to trying to hit with the helmet, and you, you were trying to pull back, get out of the way, whatever, then you need then that does not get called targeting. That's just a personal foul and a 15 yard penalty. But otherwise, it's targeting. That's why, and that's how I think you can implement targeting in the NFL. I think the rest will get a, will get a lot of that call those calls wrong I think the, the refs could very easily it'll be a learning curve for the referees sure but if it's implemented correctly I think it would be a very good change to the game well I'm Finnegan Corkin Dolan and we'll see what happens in the final four of the NFL playoffs 
I've been Matt Mano, and man, I wish the Patriots were here right now. Don't worry, we'll be back sooner than you think. I'm Sean McClellan, and I'm hoping the New York Jets can get franchise quarterback to Sean Watson this week. Hopefully. I don't care what we give up at this point. I really don't care. I'm Tom Owen. We'll see you back here next week for the Super Bowl special.